Hello, it's Mrs. Walsh again with our read aloud of the insignificant events in the life of a cactus. Our main character is Avon and she is moved to Arizona. And she, uh, last time we left off with Avon is that she's met a new friend named Connor um, while eating lunch in the library and he um, has Tourette's. So he has uncontrollable voices and actions and he actually was barking at her so let's see where we are right now oh the effect is blockhead so there we go chapter 10 on sunday afternoon i wrote another blog post when you have a malfunction yuck i hate that word like i do you definitely have to deal with the usual looks the most pe popular look i get is the one I like to call the I'm so cool nothing phases me, not even your missing arms. Look, these are the people who pretend they don't notice any missing arms. You could also call this the sure I'm totally used to seeing people with no arms look or the I have a tons of har armless friends look. These people are just way too blasé about it. I mean, come on, you really don't notice my missing arms? Because I can tell you, tell you, you do by now, you, by how you refuse to look at, at my torso, like the whole sun is setting on my chest. Like, just go ahead and look, for goodness sakes. Look and ask questions if you want. These people try way too hard. Then there's the look I like to call the, oh my gosh, I'm staring at your armless area. Just kidding. No, I'm not. No, now I'm staring. No, I'm not. These are the people I can clearly see staring at me with, out of the corner of my eye, but as soon as I look at them, they look away. Seriously, people, you're not fooling anyone. Just keep on staring. It's okay to be curious. Everyone is. There's also the dreaded pity look. The, oh, you poor thing with no arms look. These people not only look at me, but they give me a pitifully sad smile when I make eye contact with them. They should save those looks for starving homeless orphans. Being armless isn't that bad. And then there's the worst look of all. I have to deal with it because it's almost always come some little kids who haven't learned manners yet. It's the, I can't stop staring at you because you're a freak look. Sometimes these looks end in screams and kids running away. I stopped typing. The post sounded all lighthearted and ha ha funny, but I didn't write that. Write that. I ignored these looks to the to the best of my ability. I didn't write that. I pretend they don't bother me, but even after thirteen years of seeing them, they still hurt. I also didn't write that the last time I got one of these looks was just before, just the day before, while I was at the grocery shop with mom. Mom likes to take me grocery shopping with her. She says it's because I need to learn how to grocery shop on my own, but I really think it's because she likes having a child slave to command. So mom basically makes me handle all the groceries in the store. I have to get the canned tomatoes from the bottom shelf, the soy sauce from the top shelf. I'm so flexible it would blow your mind. The cereal from the middle shelf, the bag of apples from the produce department. We go with bagged produce so I'm not putting my feet all over the fresh food in front of people. And yes, even the rotisserie chicken. The rotisserie chicken was sort of a disaster, but that's not the point of the story. The fact that it takes us three hours to grocery shop isn't the point either. Sometimes I wish mom had some other hobbies besides teaching Avon how to do stuff. So I was in the cereal aisle trying to slide this box out of, the, of corn puffs for, out from the shelf with my foot. I had just finally got it wedged between my head and shoulders just as I stood up and turned to drop it into the cart. I caught this little girl standing in the aisle giving me the dreaded, I can't stop staring at you because you're a freak look. I stared back at her for a moment. You got a problem with corn puffs, I said. Her mom's head shot up from reading the labels on the box of instant oatmeal. She saw what was going on and grabbed her car and daughter and scurried away. I acted all cool, like I couldn't have cared less about it, but I still remember it happening. I remember every time it happened. When I was done writing my post, Dad asked me to help him put some fresh paint on the flat wooden pictures standing by the front entrance of the park. 
the kind with the cutouts that people um, can stick their heads through for photographs. I seriously doubted. Anyone took pictures with the faded wooden figures, but I agreed to go with them because I'm such a good daughter. I could see why he wanted to freshen them up. The paint was so faded you could hardly tell what they were anymore. And one of them looked like you were sticking your head through a giant um, hole, but not exactly a family image you were going for. Dad put a chair out for me to sit on while I painted with my foot. My painting skills aren't exactly the finest, but I can manage some simple um, pictures. Just like, just don't expect me to paint your portrait unless it's a stick figure face is, is acceptable. As I worked on turning the small hole um, that, with the barrel cactus on top of it, I saw Connor walking over the bridge that connected the parking lot to the park. The bridge was built to go over a wash. Washers are like empty riverbeds that run all over North Scottsdale so that when it rains, the water can flood the city in um, an orderly manner. Connor didn't have to go through the kiosk or anything like that he entered, like as he entered the park because admission was free. All the money made from us pay, paying for the many attractions had, had that. You could call that. Hey, Connor, I said as he walked up to me, barking a few times on his way. You came. Hi, Avon, he said, looking around, squeezing his hands together. There aren't very many people here. Oh, this place is always dead, I told him. Connor seemed relieved. Dad looked up from painting the, the gun in the cowboy's hand. I thought it was a sea cucumber, but a gun made a lot more sense. Why would the cowboy be pointing a sea cucumber at people as they entered the park? And where would a cowboy in the middle of the desert get a sea cucumber from anyway? Who's this, Avon? Dad asked. Oh, Dad, this is Connor. We met at school. Dad reached out his hand, and Connor shook it. Nice to meet you, Connor. Do you mind if I take a break, I asked Dad. He looked at my handiwork so far. It definitely looks less polish in the middle there, so I guess you're free to go. I handed him my paintbrush, slipped my shoe back on, and walked off with Connor down the main street. Connor suddenly chuckled beside me. It's just so cool that you live here. I scowled at the comment. So what have you been up to? Oh, nothing, he said. My mom's working all weekend, and I got tired of playing video games, so I thought I'd walk over and see, see, where, see you here. It made me feel good that he had come here just to see me, especially since he had mentioned not liking to go a lot. I like to play video games. He looked surprised. Really? Yes, I said. Anyone at his look of surprise, um, annoyed by it. I can play. I bet I could kick your butt as just about any, about any game. Are you challenging me? Because pretty much all I do when I'm home is play video games. I'm like a professional video game player. Well, we'll just see about that, I said. Does your mom always work on the weekends? He shrugged. Yeah, she works all the time. She has two jobs, he shrugged. I realized how shrugging was another one of his tics. I wondered how many different tics he had. What does your mom do, I asked. Oh, she's a nurse in the ER. That's cool, I guess, Connor said, except I never get to see her. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to say, so I walked up to the porch of the soda shop and sat down in one of the rocking chairs. Connor sat beside me. I tried to think of something else to talk about. My mom took me to this cool instrument museum yesterday. Have you ever been there? Connor shook his head. I don't get out much. Do you play any instruments? He shook his head again and barked, no. I waited for him to ask me if I did. He didn't. He didn't, and I figured it was because he assumed I couldn't. I play. I didn't hadn't meant to say it with quite so much sass. He looked surprised again. Of course. Why were all people always surprised that I could do stuff? I bet I'd get surprised look if I told people I can breathe air without help that anybody help or swallow my food or pee in the toilet. What do you play? He asked. Guitar. With your feet? No, with my belly button. Of course, my feet. Connor's eyes widening, and then he pursed his lips in a little smirk. You're joking again, aren't you? Yes, I play with my feet. Uh, I play.
play with my feet. Awesome, he says, rocking in his chair and blinking his eyes rapidly. He did look impressed. Play for me sometime. I've got to see you play with your feet. I shifted in my seat. Um, sure. I didn't tell him I also wrote my own music and sang. In fifth grade, I had come to the realization that it was far more productive for me to channel my creativity, my creative storytelling into songwriting than to do, than to only use, use it to shock people with morbid horror stories about my armlessness. I had written several songs since then. Most of them were pretty bad, like take an ice pick to your own ears bad. Um, a song I wrote about learning how to put my first um, bra on immediately comes to mind. A couple were possibly worth playing, but the only people I had ever played for were my parents. Do you ever see your dad? I asked him. His expression turned somber, and I was instantly sorry I had asked. Not much, he said. Well, that's too bad. I rocked my chair beside him. He and my mom used to fight about me all the time. He looked out at the main at Main Street as he spoke. He didn't understand why I couldn't just hold my ticks in. It made him angry. He always said to me, Connor, why don't you just knock it off? Look at how you're upset you're making us. Just stop it. And my therapy bills were expensive and my dad didn't want to pay them pay for them anymore. He wanted me to just take the meds and stop ticking. But they made me feel awful. I think my dad would have done anything to just stop my ticks. And then he realized they weren't going to stop and he couldn't deal with it, so he left. I'm sure your parents had problems like that, um, but nothing to do with your ticks, um, he said. I said, thinking Connor's dad sounded like a real jerk. All their fights were always about me, my ticks and my bills. I can't see why they can't stand, I can, I can see why they can't stand me. I can't stand myself most of the time. I wish I could hold the ticks in and pretend to be normal. I didn't know what to say to that. I was sure Connor was wrong about his parents. I couldn't imagine parents being like that. I'm sorry. I wish I could go grow arms and pretend to be normal. Connor, in the corner of his mouth, tipped up a little. I still don't completely understand why you can't hold your ticks in. I know you said it hurts, but why? Connor thought for a moment. It's like when you have a bad cough. You know, when you get that tickle in your throat and you really want to cough, you can not you can concentrate really hard on holding it in, but it's so uncomfortable and eventually you just have to cough. That's what it feels like to not tick. Like this painful feeling in my chest builds up and goes up to my throat until I have to just bark. Or it builds in my eyes until I just have to blink to relieve it. And then it builds again and again. And it never goes away for a, for a long. It always builds again. Oh, I said, that's really weird. Why does it do that? Connor sh shrugged. It's some kind of malfunction in my brain. Can you get brain surgery? Connor laughed. That seems like a little extreme. I guess you can do surgery but only if the Tourette's is super bad and dangerous. I can live with mine, so I'm not going to do any brain surgery. That would be scary. Yeah, I guess that would be pretty risky, I grinned at him. I don't think I would do an arm transplant, even if it were possible. Could you, could, could it have some scary side effects, you know? Um. Connor raised his eyebrows. Oh, yeah, what kind of scary side effects, though? Like, what if the arms came from a serial killer and they just stopped, they just kept killing people, even one, even on somebody else's body? Or the arms were too dead and I had these zombie arms attached to my body. Too dead? Yeah, or if they were, had naked lady tattoos all over them. Or if they had terrible nail fungus that slowly spread and took over my whole body. You've thought a lot about this, said Connor. I sighed. You have to think about these things in case the opportunity ever arises. I glanced over at the petting zoo and saw Spaghetti sticking his mutant head over the, the fence. I wonder if he was looking for me. I visited him several times a day to pat him with my foot and tell him how adorable he was. But his, you know, for his self-esteem. 
since none of the other kids wanted to pat him, I felt like it was my sole responsibility to improve his ego. Come on, I said, sitting up in my rocker. I want you to meet someone. Connor followed me across the street, and I stopped when I reached Spaghetti and nuzzled my face to his. To his. This is Spaghetti. Connor patted Spaghetti's head without flinching. He's cute. Spaghetti is a mutant, I said, kissing his head, like me. Well, you shouldn't say that about yourself. Connor gave me a stern look, like he was my dad. I didn't mean a creepy mutant, I said. We're just kind of cool, like X-Men mutants. Connor smiled. Oh, well, then that's okay. We left Spaghetti, and we walked back to the soda shop. Henry stopped out on, onto the porch. I thought I saw you out here, Avon, he said. Hi, Henry, I said. This is my friend Connor. I felt a little warm fuzzy in my chest when I used the word my friend. Friend. Henry smiled at Connor and then turned back to me. Are you ready for the next rodeo? I glanced at Connor. I'm not going to be in any rodeo. Henry laughed. That will be the day, he said. A rodeo without Avon. Well, say hi to Joe for me. And he started to walk back inside. I don't know any Joe, I called to Henry. Do you know Joe? Henry just chuckled again and did that same little hand wave like he had when I told him I d didn't know anything about tarantulas. You're such a joker, he said, and then turned and went back into the soda shop. That was weird, Connor said. Who's Joe? I don't know, I said. The owner of the park's name is Joe Cavanaugh, but I guess no one's ever see seen sees him or seems to know anything about him. The accountant told my parents he never visits the park. I learned in the learned, excuse me, I leaned in and lowered my voice. And get this, pictures of the cabinets in the museum here have been removed. That's strange, Connor said. I wonder why. I, I don't know. I found this old storage shed behind the buildings, though, and it and it, it has seven do not enter signs on it an old broken handle that was padlocked. I couldn't get the doors open, but you might be able to. Do you want to try? Connor nodded excitedly. Yeah, let's go. I led him down the short trail until we reached the old wooden shed. It looked like it was on the verge of collapse, much like several of the other buildings at the park. See all the signs I said? Seven of them. Cool, I wonder what's in there. After a few tugs and grunts, Connor was able to slide the door open. I scraped my nose a bit on the old wooden door, and I hoped I didn't get any splinters in my face. Getting them out would not be fun. Connor and I looked around the stacks of boxes and piles of junk, and the shelves stuffed with old books and papers and props. Where do you even begin? I said. I looked up and saw a box perched on the top, one of them on the old bookshelf. The writing on it was faded and water stained, but I could just barely make out three letters. A, Z. A water stained face and then an N. Check out that box up there, I told Connor. He looked at them and read the letters A, Z, N. And we stood there for a moment in silence before Connor barked, staring at me. Avon, he cried. I snorted. Of course not, Avon, I thought for a moment. Kavanaugh. Oh, right. Connor smacked himself in the head. Stupid. He stared at, at it for a while. How do we get it down? I looked around the room for a ladder or something. I could try headbutting it off the shelf, I said. Connor laughed. If we can find something for me to stand on, I think I can get it down. We found a little table covered in an old documents on the corner of the room. Connor moved the papers off it and dragged the table to his book to the bookshelf. He climbed up and brought the box down, then placed it on the table and opened it. This stuff is really old, he said, pulling out a book that looked like it had been soaked in water and left to dry out in the heat repeatedly. Though it was badly damaged, we could make out the big hairy tarantula on the cover. More tarantula stuff, I mumbled, studying the cover. What's the deal with tarantula stuff? Connor asked. Someone here was really into them. There are tarantula pictures in the soda shop and the tarantula display in the museum. Connor pulled out 
another book, a sketchbook. The pages made brittle, crinkling sounds as Connor turned as Connor turned them. Gear, turned them. Careful, I told him as the corner of one of the pages broke off. He studied the sketches. There were several drawings of horses and stagecoach paths, and of course of tarantulas. There was also a detailed sketch of a necklace with the blue stone in it. Connor pointed at the date at one of the pictures, 1973. Someone made these over 40 years ago, he said. He looked through the rest of the box and found some uh, horse figurines, an old hairbrush, and a glass case that reminded me of an aquarium. Why would there be an aquarium of all things in here, I said. He shook his head. Maybe it's for something else. I carefully turned the fragile pages of the sketchbook with my toe and stopped on a sketch of a tarantula. It was quite lifelike. Someone had spent a lot of time sketching every tiny hair on each of the right and each of the eight legs. Someone who clearly had a serious interest in these giant spiders. I think you're right. All right, I'm only going to do read chapter 10 because it's a long chapter. Um, I can't wait to see your visualizations on the Padlet. Um, I'll see you then.